Hello and welcome to a quick demonstration of the pen tool in Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop CS2, but this will also work at least as far back as Photoshop 7. Here's your pen tool. You can get to it by either pressing P or by clicking on it. And there's different types and different things there and different things there. Those are all important. This right here, if you use it, won't make a shape what it makes is a uh, path, work path, which isn't useful for what we're doing. So you'll want to use that. It starts by default on a solid shape. So I click and drag, click, drag, click, drag. And there you've got a shape. And if you look in your layers, you can see it's above the background. Now, if you want to take away from the shape, you use this, making sure that this shape is still selected and you can see the dot, the lines around it. And then you can make a hole. Then if you want to add back into the shape, you don't do this. If you choose that one, it'll make a uh, new layer. You choose this and you can add on at will. Okay. Now, if you want to change the transparency of the layer, you can either change the setting here in percentages, or you can use a keyboard shortcut on your numeric keypad. And in this case, it's 30%, 40%, 50%. You can see the changes. And if you hit zero, it goes back to 100%. So if you needed to do something that was underneath this layer and you ne needed this or you needed to see under it, drop to 30%, make a new layer, and then you can choose the color, whatever. And you can see the color. Now, since this layer was set to 30%, this layer was set to 30%, this one also defaulted to 30%. You can set it back to 100 if you want. Then when you turn that to 100, you can't see behind it anymore. Okay, for now I'm going to turn it into a lighter color so that I can show you what to do with shadows. There are several ways to change colors. Depending on what you have this set, you can hit Option Delete to fill with your foreground color or Command or Control Delete on a PC, Windows PC, to turn it into the background color. Right now we will leave it in the foreground color. Now I'm going to add in another layer of color. You see up here that means it's going to start a new layer rather than work with one of the others. You'll also notice that everything here is grayed out. If I hit Enter, which selects this, now they're back on, and I could choose to continue adding or not. Hit Enter again, they turn off again. It'll be a new layer. And by Enter, I mean Enter on the keypad, not Return on the keyboard. Okay, I'm going to start a layer. I'm not worried about staying in the lines or anything. Now, it doesn't look like it's doing much at the moment. Go to Layer Properties and choose multiply and you'll see it's turning it dark. Now if I continue to draw from this point after having completed that, it doesn't default to adding. What it'll default to is making a new layer, so I want to end up with another layer. I don't want that. I want all of this shade to be on one layer. So I go in, hit that, and I can continue. Now the nice thing is after you do that once, it doesn't stop until you go off of this layer. Now, again, not much of a shadow because you can't, uh, you can still see over here. You, you just want it to be dark along your main object. To do that, you head over to this, hold in the option button, and it'll turn into that little symbol but when it's between things, and it'll group. Now, other than that line, it's just a shadow on that shape. Hit enter, that disappears, and you can see exactly what it looks like. An alternative to hitting enter that won't take you off the layer is command or control H 
will hide and reveal. Now if I were to group this layer to this layer, all that would appear is whatever fit within that original layer. Ungroup it. Now when you ungroup, everything gets ungrouped that was in the chain above the point where you ungroup it. So I have to regroup this. Now in Photoshop 7, there's a keyboard shortcut for grouping items. It is Command-G. Now in Photoshop CS2, what Command-G does, I will show you. Select both of these layers. Command-G puts them in a group. That's new in CS and CS2. They didn't have that in 7. But it does take a bit of getting used to if you're used to Photoshop 7 and working in CS2. To group keyboard shortcut in uh, CS2, it's Command Option G, and it does the same thing. Now if you feel that this blue is too dark for your shadow, let's say you want it a little bit more uh, subdued, rather than just pick and choose among your color palette, what you can do is go over here, double click on the icon, and it pulls up the big color picker. Then you can look at it side by side and adjust it accordingly until it matches kind of what you're after. I actually don't really care since this is just a doodle, so, but there you go. And I believe that'll do it for this short demonstration. I hope it was helpful, and if you have any comments or suggestions or questions, feel free to ask.